So I'm going to give a countdown, and when I say go, you can start the timer. Um, if you just give me one second here. Three, two, one, go. By the way, the estimate is two hours, 25 minutes. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, welcome to Pokemon Wii Pikachu's Adventure. This is a very not known well game at all for the Nintendo Wii. Um, it actually has a sequel known as Pokemon 2. Thanks for the good luck. Uh, basically, the story is you you play as Pikachu and you're playing around with your friend Charmander, Chikorita, and Pillow and Mew, and you're having fun. You get bumped into the mysterious tunnel, and then yeah, Poke Park. So the Poke Park. I'm gonna be dashing through text and I'm gonna explain the dialogue of it. Basically, the Poke Park is a wonderful, whimsical place that people. Not people. Pokemon go to play and have fun, have fun, make friends. But right now it's in a state of chaos because in a place high above the Pokemon Park called the Sky Pavilion, uh, which is home to a thing called the Sky Prism, uh, broke, and that's the reason why all the Pokemon are all super duper mad at each other. So we gotta go find 14 Prism pieces in total and reunite the park. So there's gonna be a lot of text mashing in this game. Oh, this is Chatot, he's like the guide of the Poco Park. Yeah. This main first part, like the first five minutes is like a tutorial segment, so it's really just do as what they say. Um, our main method of movement is not the D-pad, it's actually mashing 1 to dash, or otherwise known as quick attack. Um, this is something I'll touch upon more later. Uh, this right here, oh my god, I need that. <sighs> Buffering that input is very hard. So, there are berries in this game, which is the currency. Um, for whatever dumb reason, they like to have you break open that crate as part of the tutorial, but they don't set you in front of the berry or offset, so you have to buffer an upright input, and sometimes it, it just doesn't happen because D-pad lag. Um, you can also jump around and do parkour and stuff. And then this is what we call skill games. Um, this is how you friend other Pokemon in the game. This one's called Chase. It's basically just tag. Uh, there are other ones like Fight, aka Battle, um, Obstacle Hop, Quizzes, Hide and Seek, and I'll explain them more later. Um, when you win skill games, you get parries, and the berry route in this game is very optimized to the point where we, don't, we get exactly the amount of berries we need throughout the run. Basically, whenever they have like a text bubble above their head, generally that's where you want to go to progress the story. Um, right now, we gotta wake up some relax, so we gotta hit him with our thunderbolt. Uh, oh wow, that actually worked! <laughs> I'm very surprised. You have to take like a step in a like 
one third of a, a second step, and sometimes it would just be just too short when trying to go fast. Chat out will give us the Poke Park Guide. It's like the journal and the menu where you look at all the stuff in the game. Uh, we only look at this two times in a run. Once right here and once in the middle of the run. So I'm just going to open and close it and then re-talk to Chat out. So now we can move on. For whatever reason though, there's a necessary cutscene right here to tell you that you can read sign boards and they'll help you. Uh, basically that's if you're a casual player and you never played this game. Um, the game is based around yes-no selections on menuing and they'll always be auto-selected to no, so you always have to menu over to the left and uh, press yes. Um, I'm playing on the Wii version. There is a Wii U VC version, which is currently claimed to be faster and lagless, but no one really knows the exact amount of uh, time it saves. So, something that I gotta test someday. Um, I am, once again, I'm Deathline. I am the current world record holder for Puck Park. Wii, any percent and 100%. The current 80% world record is 220.35. So yay, we found Chikorita. By the way, we yeah, we lost all of our friends when we fell down the mysterious hole, but we just found Chikorita. Uh, this is the meadow zone. This is like the, f the grassland area of the game. Um, Poke Park is divided into many different zones. And within each zone, there are these attractions, and the attractions are where you get the prison pieces from. So this one is Bulbasaur's Daring Dash. So we're just going to play this with Pikachu. This is just a sprint game. You just got to shake the Wiimote really hard. So when you play an attraction for the first time, there's a goal time. You have to beat that goal time to get a prison piece. And then every single Pokemon that can play the attraction has a bonus time. If you beat the bonus time, you get a ton of extra berries. So we have to get every single bonus whenever we play an attraction to meet the berry count that we need. However, Trigo and Minky were like, hey, you're not allowed to play the attractions, nerds. So we're going to have to take you to Venusaur. And for whatever reason, instead of taking us who played the attraction, uh, they take Chikorita. So rip Chikorita. So Benirian and Bulbasaur feel bad, so we need to go save our friend Chikorita. So right now Chico is blocking the way. He's gonna tell us that Churchwig, he'll only let us cross if Churchwig gets the bonus at Bulbasaur's Daring Dash. But before we go find the Pokemon known as Churchwig, we're actually gonna run down here, <coughs> excuse me, and talk to Munchlax. Um, there are also a ton of friend checkpoints in the game where you need a certain amount of friends to, pro to progress. So, we get certain friends who unlock certain other friends that we may or may not get. Munchlax wants a big berry, which is in the crate. This is a very simple form of a fetch quest. There are a number of fetch quests in the game. This one's by far the, the kindest one. Mm. 
So as uh, Munchlax mentioned right there in the text, there are different kinds of berries that you can get. There are green berries, which are worth 10, red or orange berries, which are worth 50, and then golden berries, which are worth 100. I need uh, 60 or 70 extra berries from crates slash whatevers and trees, uh, depending on which Pokemon I get in a route, but normally the standard route is 70 extra berries. So there we uh, friend a church wig with playing chase with him, and he's going to unlock Pachirisu and Bonsly. So next we're going to be looking for Pachirisu and Baneri to friend, both of which play chase. That was very bad RNG. Alright, so I got this one over here. There are two Pachirisus that you can talk to. Um, when there are multiple of the same Pokemon, each one is actually unique and will give you its own text boxes. So sometimes it's faster to talk to one than it is the other. There was the other one right there. And there's Baneri being way the heck over here. Um, as you saw right there, other Pokemon can totally interact with other Pokemon. Um, they'll talk to each other, and they'll even play skill games with each other, which can be very bad sometimes. So, hopefully that doesn't happen to me, but it's entirely RNG based. Um, Pokemon can also pull an Animal Crossing and display emotions in this game. Um, there's joy, sadness, and anger. Um, Joy generally shortens the text boxes by a massive amount and saves time, but it's very rare. Uh, anger will prevent them from playing skill games with you, and so will sadness. Um, some Pokemon, when they're angry, they'll actually attempt to attack you. But as you saw there, um, friending Veneri unlocks Turtwig, or not Turtwig, uh, to Lotad and Shinx. So now we're now we're going to uh, get Turtwig's bonus and have Bulbasaur Staring Dash. This is the only time we play an attraction more than once. Because it's just required. Once you play an attraction more than the first time, you have the menu out, so I need to pay attention here and not replay the game, otherwise I lose a ton of time. So now we can go see if we can friend Shikarita. Bad low tad, so I'm gonna come back for them later. So it's uh, he'll totally let us through now, finally. Uh -huh. So we're going to run into this tree and we're going to pick up this berry. Uh, Caterpie also falls from this tree, so... Yeah. So main key will also prevent you from moving on. This is a battle or fight. Basically it's the same thing as actual Pokemon where you just gotta lower the other's Pokemon's HP down to zero before yours. Wow, he took the very rare route. I'm gonna play this standard. That's very rare that he actually goes to the right there, instead of just straight out. I don't know what causes that, but that was a small time loss. Normally I would have done a quick kill, or a, a strat to make the fight go faster, and the quick kill for the standard uh, pattern saves two seconds. Here I'm gonna mash, I actually got it. There's a single frame there where you can dash, and we call those dash frames. Um, sometimes you'll see those after cutscenes or after um, text boxes. Oh God. 
So Krogunk will let us through through bribery if we give him 200 berries. And then he'll give us 170 back just because we say we're saving Chikorita. And then he'll tell us a tip where you can sidestep in battles, which we abuse quite a bit. After most text boxes, I, uh, you'll see me do a short hop. Um, there are two time, two kinds of jumps. There's either a short hop or a, a tall, or a, um, a long hop. Basically, just how high you go. Um, after text boxes, generally there's a few frames where you can't re-talk to a Pokemon, so I try to use those frames to jump around them so I can start moving faster. So here's Venusaur, the zone leader of the Meadow Zone. He says he'll give back Chikorita if we beat Krogunk and Spiro in skill games. So I'm gonna immediately jump out of the gate and talk to Krogunk. Krogunk. So Krogunk is a battle. Um, some fights, like Krogunks, are scripted, where the same thing will happen every single time, no matter how many times I do it. As long as I do it just like this. It'll always go like that, and nothing will ever change. So I call these scripted fights, or static fights. Um, other Pokemon will run around in different patterns, and I have to react differently to the varying patterns. We're gonna also friend Caterpie here. Caterpie is the fastest chase in the game, you can do it in one frame. Uh, I got really bad at <laughs> mashing RNG there, so <laughs> it took me like 0.2. But you can definitely do that in .01. Or, yeah. And then Butterfree will show up when you friend Caterpie. That's a good low tad. So the reason why I waited to get the low tide till now is because I wanted a low tide that spawned near the river right here. Um, very rarely there are things where I can knock them into the environment as such. And if you knock them into the river here in the meadow zone, you end the fight faster immediately actually. And it saves like 6 seconds <laughs> over not doing that. So I try to aim for that every single time. This is Spiro Obstacle Hop. Obstacle Hop is another skill game, basically like just an obstacle course where I have to jump around to the Pokemon. There are three of these in the game. The first one is the easiest, the second one is the second, it's the middle, and then the third one is the hardest. So that was that. There's another skill game called Hide and Seek. We don't play this ever in any percent because it's slow, but basically it's just hide and seek. You have to go find the Pokemon in a, in a limited amount of time. So I, need, I still need Trico. Oh, he's way over here. Trico! Lutad is definitely in the way. <laughs> Luckily I'll run right through him. De depending on the, the body type and size of a Pokemon, you can either run right through them, like I did with Lotad, you'll either bounce off of them kind of nicely, um, you'll, or you'll run into them and you'll be very dizzy because they're way bigger than you. So now we can go back to Venusaur.
So basically a ton of tax smashing that just goes on here. Blah 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 blah. Lots of talking. So we're just gonna play his attraction now. Blah blah blah. Pokemon politics. This is Venusaur's vine swing. Basically, you have to swing a rope and then let go at a certain point to get enough distance for the goal slash bonus. So I need to at least get 219.76 feet to get the bonus for Frogunk. So 248 is good. You want this number to be as close as possible to 219 without going below it as that saves the most amount of time. With all except one zone leader, um, you'll get this stupid animation that takes 10 seconds. I don't know why they do this, but it's just a waste of time, so I gotta sit through this. And then I have like a minute worth of text smashing here. That involves Pokemon politics. Um, we don't save ever because it's slow. There is one time we will do a save plus quit, but I'll get to that later when that happens. So now we can move on with the game. Before we leave the meadow zone, we're gonna friend Apom and Ampipom. Which can be very annoying Pokemon. Uh, okay, I'll take this Apom right here. Give me a better chance for Ampipom. Okay. But this, tr this chase is gonna suck. So Apom will play Chase, but 9 times out of 10, Ape Oh, I got the, the okay pattern. Um, so we're gonna take like 10 seconds though. Uh, Apom runs away at pretty much like the same speed Pikachu does, so... But yeah, okay, that one is a little bit faster than the other pattern. The other pattern usually takes like 12 seconds and is very slow. But we get Apom, and then getting Apom will unlock an Ampipom. Whom, if I'm very lucky, will spawn near the river, so I can do a very sick quick kill. Oh, way over there. Don't talk to Mankey, please. Okay. Stay near the river. Kind of. Right, I'm gonna do an improvised. Alright, that kind of worked. That was a little slow, but... So again, if you knock Pokemon into the river, it goes a bit faster. Ambipom has 3 HP bars, so I had to kind of buffer that a little bit weirdly. Um, so, in battles, I can use either Thunderbolt or Quick Attack. I can use Quick Attack for one, H one, one full a bar, but they'll instantly get invincibility frames. If I use Thunderbolt first, it'll do one bar, and they won't inv instantly get invincibility frames. So, if I do a Thunderbolt and then a dash or a quick attack, I do 1.5 bars, and then I can do that again for 3 bars in total. But that time I just kind of buffered it. Instead of wasting time getting the Thunderbolt damage and then knocking Ambipom closer, um, I just dashed twice just to get it a little bit closer. This is Book Park. 
the incentive was not met for this, I'm doing standard any percent. So basically, this is the meeting place, this is the central hub of the park, we'll be here a few times during throughout the run. So Chikorita is going to build a treehouse here, which is a pretty cool idea, I hate hitting that, that was entirely my fault too. So we gotta go around to the vendors before we can move on. So this is Driftlim, who runs the Driftlim stops, which is basically your quick travel in exchange for berries. So right now we're not gonna go anywhere. Next up is the photo, photo booth, or now the photo studio run by Mr. Viss. Uh, in this game you can take photos and then save them to the Wii hard drive. Um, if you want more, you can save them to an SD card. And the game actually requires you to take a photo to progress the game, so I, t I just take one photo here, and that's it. And then last but not least, I'm going to talk to Electabuzz. Uh, there will be other Pokemon near Electabuzz who will help you uh, upgrade your your abilities. Electabuzz upgrades your Thunderbolt. Um, of course, everything is very expensive, so we don't do this. Um, the only thing we upgrade is our Quick Attack Dash in the run, which is ran by Ponyta. Um, there will be a B-Barrel there later who upgrades your HP, and then a, a Primeape who will teach you an upgrade Iron Tail. But the only thing we do in 80% is Dash, because we just want to go fast. So talk to Corfish and he'll open the gate to the Beach Zone, which is the next place we go. dash on and start the cutscene. Here's Azrael and Slowpoke talking to each other, talking about Gyarados and Fraligator, and then rumbling, and then stuff. Got an awful RNG, so I'm gonna run over here and get Slowpoke no. now. I'm looking for Slowpoke and Azrael, uh, and Starly, so I'm just gonna take my chances and get Slowpoke early. A lot of this game is going, do I want this RNG now or do I want this RNG later? And you have to decide whether or not the current RNG is best for the run. Sometimes you get really bad RNG at first, and then you get godlike after, and you get godlike after and really bad later, so you have to know when to go for it. Oh my god, thank you. Azrael can be very annoying, because she's small, and she can spawn practically anywhere in this main island, and you definitely need her, because she unlocks Totodile, who we also friend, so... Azrael is like a necessity to any percent. I hate Azrael because she bounces around and has really bad patterns which can really destroy your run like that. And I jumping is just really bad there. And it's just unfair because she'll just like warp around you. Which really sucks. So you really want to hope you get a good pattern and like not talk to her near the boardwalk. Because otherwise you just you're screwed. I don't see Starly, so I'm gonna move over here and move on. This is Corsola. Corsola will give you a quiz, which is another type of skill game. Quizzes have a number of questions. They'll always have the same answers, but the the 
spots they can be in are different, so you always want uh, the one at the top since you're already selected on it. I got pretty bad s spots there. There are four quizzes in the game, and they're not hard at all, you just gotta memorize them and make sure you don't misselect anything because you lose a ton of time if you do. the wall instead of going straight for alligator since in this game they're very good about loading zones. Um, they're, this game actually has very very little considered new glitches and skips. Um, there's one theoretical skip that's not been found or performed live in a camera recording. Um, there is an exploit called momentum swap. Basically when you jump and then go a different direction than the one you were landing in, or directly 180 degrees from that direction you were going, you can get momentum after you land. And it's something we don't very we use very often because it's not very useful. So Piplop says, hey, we can't get Why Not off the island, so go get Bidoof from the Meadow Zone. So now we gotta go back to Meadow Zone. Let's do I see Slowpoke's over there, so I could have got Slowpoke now if I didn't get him earlier, but he might have not spawned there, so... Sometimes you just gotta make that decision. So this first time, I can't skip this cutscene, but every time after that I can. Fetch quest, I need to give Bidoof four pieces of lumber to help them build their house. I'm going to ignore Chimchar for now, even though I need Chimchar. I lose two seconds talking to Pokemon that I need when I have items in my hand. Fetch quests are really sucky in this game because Pikachu, when carrying an item, can only walk. He can't run, so you just have to walk the entire direction you're going in. And then picking up items also sucks, because Pikachu, if, unless th facing directly towards it, um, even if you're like two degrees off, he won't pick it up, because he sucks. Chimchar. So we're gonna go ahead and print Shinx now. Shinx is a chase that goes by pretty quickly. God, Pikachu, why do you do this to me? <sighs> Again, with that two degree thing where Pikachu can be facing in the general direction but won't pick it up unless he's facing directly towards the item. So, this game is insanely precise and very finicky. Um, it's less about skill and more about reacting to RNG, but the skill part does matter a lot too. See, now I'm starting to rewrite my decision about not getting Chimchar earlier because I haven't seen Chimchar and waiting for him till the very end sucks. 
Because you can get some bad RNG. And you have to go with the last resort RNG. And, yeah. So I have to get Chimchar and B Burl. So Chimchar sucks, so I'm gonna go for him over here. So yeah, again, the main fight is just if there's two HP bars, we run into them and then we just sidestep out of the way. Otherwise, we do the combo, like I mentioned earlier. Pipe roll is way over here. Back up girl, B girl. Sometimes when Pokemon use moves, I'll just throw out a Thunderbolt and let them run into it. So now we can go back to the beach zone and start building bridges. There's a Starly. Alright, but I'm gonna get Totodile now, so that's good. If you're very, very, very lucky, you'll get Totodile near the ocean bed. So you can knock him into the water and save yourself a few seconds. Wow, he actually got that move off. I'm impressed. That's very rare for him to actually get the move off the entire way. Piece of lumber with me. The first time you talk to Badoof without the piece of lumber in hand, she'll be like, hey, go get me lumber. So you have to go get her lumber then. So it's better to just to go get the lumber and then talk to her. As you can save yourself a trip with text boxes. <sighs> Sharpedo and Carvana would be like, heck no, you can't build no bridges here. Because Gyarados says we can't. And they're like, well, Gyarados isn't the leader, but they're like, we're not gonna let you. So. We'll only let you if you go beat a flying attraction. Of course, I get godlike Totodile energy after I need it. Start right out here. Let's also start right over there. Let's try this one. bad. Ugh. 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 Wow. 
That really sucks. So normally, you can jump into Starly during the chase when they're over level height, but very rarely Starly will come out here and go over the slope where you can't jump into them, so you lose a little bit of amount of time. For me, I'm losing like 30 seconds already, but you know, it is what it is. So this is the next attraction, Pelipper Circle Circuit. So this we just play with either one of the two that we have. Starly is slightly faster, since it's slightly closer, so you save like frames. But Spira maneuvers, maneuvers better, so it's an interesting trade-off, but it's not hard to beat this one anyways, you only need 88. Or 9,000 if you play with uh, Sphera. See, I already got it. Gravana and <laughs> Sharpedo will insta-friend us after we beat the attraction. And then Vidoof will build the bridge out of these tiny few sticks that I gave her. If you go too fast, you won't pick up the items because you weren't standing still for long enough.
So this is the next attraction, Gernis' Aqua Dash. Before we go on, we're gonna friend for alligator. This is gonna be a mixture of the combos and then uh, an extra thunderbolt. And since thunderbolt is slightly faster than dash at a base level. It saves a few frames. Views cutscene if you do it more than once, but we only ride, ride lappers one time in the game, so we have to just sit through it, which is unfortunate because if you ride lappers two times, you automatically become friends. <laughs> Welcome to the Iceberg Zone.
Gosh darn it. There are two Teddy Ursas that you can talk to. One is a quiz, one is a chase, and I want the one that is chase. And if I talk to the one that's a quiz, I lose three seconds every time. Of course, the one with the chase was right behind me in the first place. Also, the reason why we got that fire block out of the way first is because when you first approach Glalie, there's a bigger loading zone than normal for his cutscene, so you save two seconds of walking when you do that. Friend Earth Ring right now. Here I'm going to show a, a way to buffer a, a Thunderbolt. So, as long as you're holding the A button, the Thunderbolt won't go until you let go of A. So, I can jump in midair. Hold A and turn around, and then let go when I'm in when I'm done with the animation. Please be a good Teddy Ursa. Teddy Ursa. Oh my gosh, that is very bad RNG. I have been getting bodied by these guys as of late. It's a 50 50 chance. Oh my god, please pick up. It's a 50 50 chance, and most of the time you'll get the wrong one. Or you'll, most of the time you'll get the right one, but I've just been getting the wrong one as of late, so... I'm gonna go ahead and take the two second time loss from dropping items and picking it back up just to get this Teddy Ursa out of the way so I don't have to deal with this anymore. Because I've already lost, like, ten seconds in total. Hey, I got a red berry, so that means I got 50 extra berries, so I don't have to collect any more berries from crates now. So I just have collected 70 from crates and trees. Which is very lucky for me. So I got a battle purple up to be able to use the chairlift to get down to Frostmass.
Quagsire wants a big berry to be his friend, so you gotta take this big berry to him. And we also friend Octillery while we're down here. Sleeping is setting in. Oh. So we're gonna take the chairlift back up. I have to be very careful not to hit a specific cutscene coming up. Okay. If you run anywhere too close to that tree, you'll get like a 15 second cutscene, which is very bad. Here we're getting Glalie for an upcoming attraction. So 
this index attraction. I employ on snow slide. By the way, employ on is the zone leader of the iceberg and beach zones. Power slide is part ground type, so I can't use the bolt on it. I do a cool buffer strat there, though, where I run away and then I jump back and I dash towards him. Who? So he takes both. He'll take damage, and I'll take damage. And then he knocks me into the out of bounds loading zone, and I just run up and whack him for the last hit. Cost is 13, 50 berries in total. There's one more dash upgrade that we buy, which will max up our dash, but at the end of the game. But for now, we're gonna move on to the next zone, which is the cavern zone. Ran by Blazekin. Thank you. 
So Mr. Mime's like, hey, there's a rail missing and I really need it, otherwise I'm gonna be in a ton of trouble, so... He says talk to Zubat, they're completely not useful, so... And he talked to Mawile, Mawile was like, yeah, it happens, no one likes the zone, unfortunately. Get that ball while I'm all the time. That's godlike. jaws on the back of her head have a separate hitbox and if you run anywhere near them you'll get knocked away so you have to hit her from the side otherwise you get knocked away and it's what's annoying is pikachu has an auto pull towards pokemon during skill games so he'll automatically pull towards the jaws because they're a separate hitbox so you have to run really 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 wide and then like dive bomb while from the side So we're gonna turn Craney Dose. And Magnemite. You need to be careful because other Pokemon will totally get mad at you and try to interact with you during your fights too. So I can only use the nibble, or uh, I mean quick attack. Oh, I'm gonna get a right top of him so he tries to attack me, but he'll hit the crate by, by instead. Because he's towards me. If you go too far away, he'll try to use Bumerang instead of double edge or takedown. Exactly this box to open Diglett, he'll tell us the rail is under Snorlax. bought this brick berry so you, cause you have to bring it over here because since they don't hit me with your thunderbolt you have to hit him with your thunderbolt and then he'll want the big berry oh. 
Yeah, finally move. And then wouldn't you know it, there's the hot springs where everyone was uh, sad that they didn't have any more. Spawn in Vampy and Raichu. Shoutouts to Raichu, another runner here at uh, SRX. So we're gonna take the rail all the way back to Mr. Mime. So this is like one of the longer fetch quests, so go ahead and do whatever you need, because I'm just gonna be walking for a while. Um, I am gonna check the drift from stop here because it's necessary. But then I'm just gonna walk all the way back to Mr. Mime. Minecart back, or the Merle back. Now we need the minecart because we don't even have the minecart. So we're gonna go get it back from Gibble. Gibble is part ground type, so we have to use Quick Attack. It's weird because this game, they have types, but the type matchups don't matter. Like, as you saw earlier, you can use Thunderbolt against Cranidos, who is a pure rock type. And It'll do this just the normal amount of damage. If Pokemon's ground type, you will never do damage with Thunderbolt. However, there are like other weird Pokemon who don't take damage from Thunderbolt. Um, like Breloom, who is a grass fighting type. He doesn't take damage from Thunderbolt. Not that we get Breloom, but yeah, the fighting in this game is a little interesting. How did I talk to Vampy? I wanted to talk to Raichu. I want to talk to Raichu, Torchic, Driftblim, and uh, Diglett. Good Raichu chase. Torchic. Get out of the way! Oh, darn you, right you! I'm not getting in the way. I was like a frame too soon there, and I hit Torchic while they were still in, inv in invincibility frames. So the reason why we uh, opened up Driftlam is because we're gonna talk to Driftlam and we're gonna friend them since we've been using their services a lot, but we're not gonna go anywhere. So this will bump up our friend count. And the reason why we do this now is because we need 50 friends to play 
uh, Bastion's block garage and try to fling Fernie Diglett here, we'll have exactly 50 friends. It's like a racquetball, you gotta just hit the ball against the wall, score points. A normal hit will multiply the number by 100. If you hit 2, uh, you'll do a power shot and multiply by 200. And we'll go through Bastardon. Um, the goal is to get 4,000, and you want to generally aim for the same number every time, but it's very hard because this game is finicky. Dog trios will also get in the way eventually. Because they like to like just block your hits, but they can be useful to end a uh, a ball quicker like that. to the next zone and get out of the cavern zone. Right before we leave though, we're gonna talk to Doug Trio and get a free friend. So now we're gonna move on to the lava zone. Two magmies up here, and there are two magmies at the bottom of the hill. These two play chase, and are a lot faster than the ones at the bottom who play ba uh, battle. So it's always worth going for these guys when I see them. Type, so I have to use quick tech.
before we, got, we can use the drill, we gotta defeat him on top in a fight. So right here, I can either get iron ore or gold nuggets. I really don't want gold nuggets as I lose 25-ish seconds per gold nugget. So gold nugget plus no. Gold nugget plus no. Alright, that's good. That's one out of two. I need one more iron ore. Very few times I willingly walk with an item and then drop it because of the game. Basically, once you use the drill, Torkoal will be over here and be like, We're just gonna be a bunch of D bags and block the way and be rude so we can train you. So now all the Torkoal spawn in, and sometimes they'll, all of them will be angry and attack you when you're trying to walk down here. Most of the time, they're fairly docile though. So with this one, we're gonna make a shape or a straight shape, which will get us an iron bar, which we can use to fix the broken lever. Right there is a dash frame. This saves one second. What am I doing? Was not mashing one. Talk to Golem. Golem will automatically find you. It will also give you berries in exchange for iron and gold things, which is useful in casual playthroughs. This one we're gonna make a round shape to make an iron top so we can play the next attraction.
This right here is some grade one hitbox versus textures. This is right here, here's bumper burn, which is basically a Beyblade. I just gotta get 5,000 points. I knock each other Pokemon out of the ring. Multiplier goes up each time I knock out Pokemon consecutively. And resets every time I get knocked out, so it's already very bad. I hate motion controls. I hate motion controls. There are power ups that make this a little bit easier. Here's Charmander, the last of our main friends. He erroneously says that he almost fell in the bubbling lava when this is in fact magma, not lava. The more you know, I don't know why they call it the lava zone, it's the magma. Terminology. So there'll be a meta type blocking the way. This is the second quiz. This is Book Park Wii for the Nintendo Wii. Passing it on to Cavern. Not paying attention to the game. Cool. Farfetch'd is blocking the way. Oh, my God. 
His place against Boulder Bash. Basically, just a rock breaking game. If you just kind of break the rock, you get 100. If you smash the rock, you get 300. Do a save plus quit strat here, which saves six seconds. It's the only other time you see me opening the menu. decided to reestablish the plot here in the middle of the game. Message from me. He wants to collect prison pieces, bring to Sky Pavilion. It's like, what do you think we've been doing for the past hour and a half, dude? Come on. Uh, 
here, I'm gonna get a double dash for Ponyta for free. But it's my friend Ponyta in Lava Zone. Which, uh, this is the movement I'm going to be using during Haunted Zone. I need the giant pain. So the next sub zone is called the Haunted Zone. attraction is called Tango Swing Log, which is like maybe a sort wide swing, but just the multiple swings. Six seconds. <laughs> Oh. 
past me. Hang on! By the way, that was Dustin's speed slam. It's like daring dash, but with uh, hurdles you run through. Just gone. It's not supposed to be really dark. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Take all of the string thread all the way back to Mr. Rivas. So take your time. Yeah. 
Ribas. I have no idea. I actually don't play with the audio on, so I have no idea. I am just focusing very hard on trying to not pass out in the middle of this run. Stupid double dash. video. I'm surprised my internet's behaved and I haven't dropped any frames, but knock on wood because I'm talking about it. This is Rodham's spooky shoot him up. It's a ghost hunting mini game. We gotta shoot the ghastlies and get cars and Rodham's to get points.
Yeah, the lighting screens are pretty, pretty cute. I'm finally gonna upgrade our dash to max potential for 1500 barriers. By this point, we should have exactly 15 to 45, like we do. So we'll be left over with 45, which we need. 44, the upcoming attraction. Oh my god, I'm starting to pass out. <laughs> I need to power through this, I can do this. It's not my capture card. Sizing issues. <laughs> All right, I'll go to the granite zone. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Dash has been upgraded to max potential. It does one and a half damage on its own. So I'm not even gonna bother with the uh, bubble right here. That's a safer right there. and just uh, go ahead and do the puzzle. This is basically what he wants us to do anyways. You can't use um, Thunderbolt on Electivire since he's electric type, but you, you wouldn't want to anyway, it seems to dash.
Done to talk to Snorlax about the other password. Salamence's air ace. Thank you. 
Thank you. This is the last zone in the game, the flower zone. So we have to get to the top of the jury house to collect the mirror, but there's a joke between me and a, and a different runner of this game that we call this treehouse, uh, or this, this segment, <laughs> um, there's no such thing as good treehouse movement because the entire tree is just so poorly coated and so poorly made. There's like a million different corners and things you can get st stuck on and there's very little straights. and I'll just shoot out a beam of light into space and summon Rayquaza. Rayquaza is the zone leader of the flower and granite zones. quite a while. Probably for like another a little less than 10 minutes. Two twenty two. 
Which is a freaking miracle considering I'm doing this right half asleep. segment of the game, Sky Pavilion. Just so the person who's doing my, my timer knows, um, there's going to be a sequence where I'm playing with Mew a bunch, and then there's going to be a chase. And then when I'm done with chase, there's going to be a lot of text bashing, and then I'm going to do a countdown from 4, 3, 2, 1, and then I'll say time, and whenever I say th that word is when you stop the timer. Um, it's on the first full black frame after the four text boxes that I count down, but I will just, I will say... I'll do the countdown and then say time, so just so you know. Or two ever again. <laughs> I've ran Puck Park 2 before and I absolutely hate Park 2 compared to Park. Get your Mew Mew Mews out. <laughs> the first of many games that Mew challenges you to is Obstacle Hop. Yeah, I made that one. 
God, my thumb is like losing pressure. Like I can't even push it in the right direction. That's how tired I am. So now we're gonna do a series of fights. The first of which is Mac Mortar. Next up is Gar uh, uh, yeah, Garchomp. So you can't use Thunderbolt even if you wanted to. Not that you would want to, because Garchomp basically uses Giga Impact the entire time. Otherwise, you would use Earthquake, but you should never be in his Earthquake range. Oh, I got unlucky there. That was like two frames too fast. <laughs> I'm about to hit him as he came out of the animation. Video. The last one is Tyranitar. Last thing is chase, and I'm gonna shut up during this chase because it has epic music for like five seconds. Get ready soon for the timer. Four, three, two, time. Two twenty nineteen. It's a pretty good time um, in a marathon setting. Um, I'm actually very impressed that I got this time, considering I almost fell asleep a number of times throughout the run, <laughs> and I had fairly awful RNG. Um, it just goes to show that this game, you really don't need a lot of skill to be good at it. Um, of course. You do need to be skilled to be good, but it just you don't need that much. It's a great game. I enjoy running it. I'm glad I got to speed run it. Um, shout out to the graveyard shift though. I'm dying because I can't, can't sleep. <laughs> um, if you ever want to see more Poke Park speed runs, feel free to follow me at twitch.tv slash deathline77. Um, otherwise. Yeah, get hyped for the next run, which is uh, Contra Rebirth, e easy difficulty by Linka Meister. So, yeah, shoutouts to that. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed Poker Park, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.